Great designers help teams and stakeholders make better decisions by using questions to identify opportunities, reveal underlying needs, and understand user context, all of which lead to better designs. But there is to discuss about the messed up designers. Here's a list of the designers who completely messed up their job, let's start. The Throwing Star The three equally sized volumes of this Y-shaped house in Mexico, designed by Cadaval and Amp, Sola Morales, each point towards a different view. Casa de la Roca's throwing star-shaped arms, which extend out from a central living room and kitchen, contain bedrooms that each have a large window and small covered balcony to take advantage of the views. Gateshead Millennium Bridge The Eiffel Tower, which looms over the Paris skyline, measures 1,063 feet, 324 meters, high from its four-footed base to the tip of its flagpole. Now imagine tearing the tower from its moorings and carrying it southeastward, through the massif central region of France to the Cévennes Mountains. Now imagine setting the tower down in the Tarn Valley, a deep gorge surrounded by high, rolling hills near the town of Millau, France. Now, finally, picture lining up six more similar towers and stringing a roadway across the valley. It is voila the Milo Viaduct, a massive bridge that opened in 2004 to carry the A75 motorway south to Beziers. Inflatable Latex Trousers by Hari Krishnan Another designer who chose to work in latex was Hari Krishnan, who used the material to create billowing, blow-up trousers that he paired with cropped, tailored jackets. Air is pumped into the trousers via a 7mm wide valve at the bottom. Netina Shoes by Netha Goldberg Israeli designer Netha Goldberg created a collection of knitted shoes that have tampons, matches and charging ports attached via integrated openings their surfaces. The shoes are designed to encourage positive social interaction by the wearer being able to offer items that are regularly lent to and shared with other people, such as when a smoker asks someone for a lighter. The Highgate Sausage Slotting into a typical row of terrace of houses in Highgate, London, the upper floors of Sixwood Lane were built using boat building techniques. Built on top of two traditionally constructed floors, the sausage-shaped wooden framework was prefabricated off-site before being craned into place. Denevu Creek Bridge Concrete, a hard and porous composite of cement, sand, aggregate and gravel, forms the foundation of most bridges. It holds up well to compressive forces, those that push down at right angles, but not as well to tensile forces, those that act along the length of the material to pull it apart. Engineers use steel bars, also known as rebar, to reinforce the tensile strength of concrete. Unfortunately, steel rebar can corrode when exposed to fresh water or salt water, which can cause distress in the concrete. One method to prevent this wear and tear involves coating the rebar with epoxy to shield the steel from corrosive chemicals. But scientists at the University of Wisconsin-Madison have developed another solution, a reinforcing matrix made from a novel fiber-reinforced polymer. Because it is non-metallic, the polymer material won't corrode, which means the concrete remains stronger longer. The Bracelet Casa Bruma, a home in rural Mexico designed by Fernanda Canales and Claudia Rodriguez, is broken up into nine dark-colored blocks that are arranged so that all the existing trees on the site could remain. Each of the different sized blocks, which each contain one of the house's functions, appear on the plan like stones on a bracelet surrounding a center courtyard. The kitchen, dining, living rooms and master suite are in four connected blocks, while additional bedrooms, a utility room and a garage occupy the remaining blocks. The Arrowhead Skylab Architecture designed the triangular floor plan of Owl Creek residents in Colorado to take advantage of the views of the, the Rocky Mountains. On the arrowhead-shaped house's lower floor, five bedrooms are arranged in a V-shape, so that they all have views across the landscape, while the upper floor has a large open-plan dining and sitting room, along with a kitchen and terrace. The Squishies by Daisy May Collingridge Overlapping layers of skin-like rolls that have been hand-stitched from jersey and cotton and filled with wadding, beanbag beans, and sand make up these playful bodysuits by textile artist Daisy May Collingridge. The squishy flesh suits were designed as a celebration of the human body in all its forms, and aimed to deny the idea that there is an ideal body type. The Artichoke Atelier Suyoshi Tain Architects designed Todoroki House for a client who wanted to be surrounded by nature. The half-octagonal ground floor of the Tokyo House has full-height glazing that gives views out to a surrounding tropical garden. Kobe Beef Japan is the creator of Kobe Beef. That goes without argument. 
In fact, a footy named Larry Olmsted wrote about the fake Kobe steak scam in an in-depth Forbes article that shines a light on the Japanese Wagyu industry in other countries outside of Japan. Olmsted noted that Japanese beef, at the time, was not allowed by the United States as an import, which debunks the so-called ability of many restaurants to sell what they labeled as genuine Kobe beef. Shamnala Bracelet Set Shambhala bracelets are linked to the Buddhist, Tibetan and Hindu cultures, attaining its name from the traditional mythical kingdom. Designed by following the macrame techniques of threading or knotting their traditional usage mostly confined to meditation. If you desire to combine tradition with style, then have a host of these unique bracelets in your kitty by going through the given tutorials. You may opt for a kit so that you have the required materials and supplies at hand. What is the meaning of the colors? The array of colors it comes in has a meaningful significance. Research suggests that besides the eyes our other body parts are sensitive to various wavelengths of light indicated by several colors. Tactile paving. Tactile refers to the sense of touch, and therefore tactile paving is paving that conveys information to users via that sense of touch. This is most commonly achieved by having a distinctive raised profile that can be detected by users, such as ribs running across the paving, or spots that create a bumpy surface. Used at the edge of major carriageways and motorways to alert vehicles they are straying onto the hard shoulder, could be considered to be tactile paving. These bumpy white lines certainly meet the above definition of tactiles, but, probably because they are not modular, and not laid as traditional paving, they are generally considered to lie outside the remit for tactile paving. We hope that you have learned something valuable, fascinating, or interesting today. Please share your comments below about what you think these fun facts. Please give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.